Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today I'm going to take a little bit of a break from all of the action script based tutorials I've been doing and I'm just going to do a little bit of magic on the timeline here. Uh, the Swift you see running here um, features a text effect that I see on HGTV all the time um, so I'm calling it the HGTV effect and really all it does is employ a pretty clever use of using masks to reveal text in a variety of ways. Um, so here you can see the text is really snappy. Um, it's a nice little eye-catching effect. What I'm going to do is jump over also to YouTube right now. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, this on the real TV. Um, but coming up is an example of this effect. So let's just play. All right, you see how that text slides across and fades down, and it's really pretty fun how it works. Let's watch one more time. So I didn't go crazy trying to match the fonts perfectly. Um, what I found very interesting was that somebody on YouTube actually used a video camera to record a standard definition television playing an HGTV commercial block. Now you might think, this guy's crazy. Why, why would anybody do that? Well, I thought that too, but then I realized, you know what? I just looked for this and I found it. So uh, thank you very much, JG201066. Um, and this guy's got a lot of commercial breaks from different channels on his site. So check it out. All right. So again, that's where I got the idea from. Let's go back to Flash. And we'll watch it one more time. And this is what we're going for. Now this is playing really quick, and to show you exactly what's happening, you know, maybe I'll slow it down to about, uh, who knows, let's say uh, five frames per second. And you'll see the first thing that happens is a mask reveals some text that isn't moving, and then text slides in under a mask, and then some text drops down from a mask. There it is, super slow-mo. All right, so it's just some very basic tweening on the timeline um, with some masking thrown in. So I'm going to go over to a start file, and I'm just going to walk you through building this thing. Um, you'll probably learn a few different things about um, building timeline-based animations. Um, going into this, I do uh, want to say just as prerequisites, you know, you should know a little bit about what a keyframe is and what a symbol is. We're not going to go that far back. Um, so in my start file, not that one, this one, um, you'll see that I have a timeline set up and I have all my symbols in place. And let me just turn everything off. And I'm just going to walk you through the timeline. Um, we have a blue background in this movie. Then we have some semi-transparent white stripes overlaid. And then in this gradient blend layer, I have a gradient symbol that is set to blend in with the background. So you'll see that those lines sort of fade out a little bit. They're really bright in here, then they get darker. And that gradient symbol, just so you can see, it's blending as hard light. It's a nice little effect just to add a little bit of texture to your movie. Um, if I went to lighten, it would look much different. Um, if we go to uh, darken, totally different. But still you get this sort of faded out effect that works really nice. So let's go back to overlay. I believe that's what I was using, or I was using hard light. These two are pretty similar. Okay, next we just have symbols that already have their instance names. Actually, they don't have instance names because we're doing timeline-based animations. We're not even going to look at the actions panel today. Um, we have another one called uh, House Hunters. We have September 03 and 9 p.m. So we have one, two, three, four symbols that we're going to animate. Now, really, the focus today is going to be on how we're going to be using masks to reveal this text. All right, um, let's start off by locking my gradient, my background stuff. All right, I don't need to be moving around my gradients or those stripes by accident. And the first thing we have is series premieres. So what I'm going to do is just turn off the visibility of all the other layers so that we can really focus here. And series premieres, the way this works is the text is going to stay still, but a mask is going to move across and reveal it. And the way a mask works is basically it reveals the content underneath it. So I'm going to add a new layer 
all right, right above series premieres, and I'm going to call it mask series. Now, in a file like this, it's very important that you keep your layers labeled so you know exactly what's happening in each layer. And in this mask series layer, I'm just going to choose a very bright color, all right, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool, and let's zoom in a little bit, all right, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle that's pretty close to being the same size as that text. I'm just going to cover it up. All right. And now this object that I just drew is a shape. Now I'm going to take this shape and do a very quick tween of it. I'm just going to go out to maybe frame number 10 or so. Okay. And I'm going to hit F6 to add a new keyframe. And we're going to create a shape tween. Back in frame one, I'm going to take this shape and I'm just going to slide it over. All right, just so that it's right in front of the S, okay? Now the way this layer is gonna work is that I'm only gonna see series premieres when this green box is overlapping it. So I'm gonna take the mask series layer and I'm gonna say I want you to behave as a mask. And so that locks both these layers and now the masking effect is in place. I don't see that text anymore. But as that box scrolls over, you'll see that that text is being revealed. So the text stays still and that green box is moving. If I unlock those layers, I get to see my shape again. So it's just a shape moving from left to right very quickly. And we'll turn the masking back on. Now the next thing that's gonna happen is House Hunters is gonna slide in from the left of the stage and move right. And let's just zoom out one. Well, you know what? I might be able to just, whoops, fit it all in. I will do that. And so I want to do the same thing for House Hunters. I'm going to add a new layer that's going to reveal that text. And I'll call it Mask House. Okay. And I'm going to be doing all my animation in the same time space right at the beginning of my movie. And then I'm going to offset the timing later on. It's a neat little trick. Um, so House Hunters, we're going to select that layer, use the rectangle tool, and again, I'm just going to draw a shape over House Hunters, okay? And now, if I turn this mask layer and tell it to act as a mask, now I can see the House Hunters text, and I don't see the green box. Well, what I need to do here is, um, in the House Hunters layer, let's turn off the mask, I don't need to see it. I know that this is the frame where my animation is going to end. It's gonna, that's where it's gonna be placed. So I'm gonna add a new keyframe, eh, maybe somewhere around, let's say frame number 20, okay? This animation is gonna be a little bit longer because it's gonna be moving longer. So I wanna just keep it going pretty good. I'm gonna hit F6, so now frame 20 and frame one, whoops, wrong layer. Let's go to House Hunters, select that layer. This is the layer that the text is in. And unlike the previous um, animation we did, I'm going to be moving the text and keeping the mask still. So in frame number one, I'm going to let's turn on that mask layer real quick. I'm going to take the text, let's just make sure it's selected, and just using my arrow keys, I'm going to slide it over. All right. So the text is going to start off outside of the mask, and then it's going to move under the mask. Okay. And we'll create a classic tween there. And by locking this layer, now we will be able to, that layer, see that the text is moving underneath the mask. All right, so both animations are pretty much happening at the same time. Okay, let's turn off all those, just so we don't get too confused of what we're seeing. And let's go up to September 03. Now this text is gonna drop down. So we're gonna do the same step again. I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm going to call this my mask dash dash come on September and this text is going to drop down so first let's draw the mask first step all right use the rectangle tool and just draw a square a little bit bigger than the text and September 03 is all one symbol so let's just go out here and I'm just going to nudge it up maybe one pixel nudge. There you go. All right. Let's just turn off that layer real quick. Actually, we'll leave it on, but I'll lock it. 
and let's select September 03. And we're going to make this a very short animation, so it's going to be 10 keyframes. I'm going to hit F6. And in the first frame, I want to make sure that that text, just using my up arrow key, is right above that mask. So what's going to happen is it's going to drop down. We'll create our classic tween. Text comes down. Well, let's turn this mask layer into an actual mask so that we can see the effect. So there you go. You'll see that September 03 is dropping down. Once that happens, we're going to do the same thing for 9 p.m. So let's turn off the visibility of these other layers so we're not distracted. And the 9 p.m. layer, we're going to have a mask set right around it. Add a new layer. Double click and call this mask. Doesn't have to be. Sorry, I didn't mean to shout at you. Um, mask dash uh, 9 p.m. And hopefully, what you're seeing is that you know once you do this once, doing it two or three more times isn't really a big deal. Um, and I'll say it a thousand times, whether you're doing action script or timeline based animations, once you get the basics down, it's just a matter of mixing and matching various techniques. So. In the mask layer for 9 p.m., I'm just going to draw the shape that's going to cover up 9 p.m., just like so. And now I'm going to work on the animation. So let me just go to frame number 10 in the 9 p.m. layer that has the text. F6 gives me a new keyframe. That's where the text is going to end up underneath that green box. And in frame 1, what I'm going to do is just, again, use my arrow keys and we'll move this right up against that, right up on top of that green box. We'll create our classic tween that moves the text down, and we'll enable layer masking. And again, remember, a mask layer has a shape that reveals the stuff in the layer underneath it. Okay? And so now, 9 p.m. drops down. All right, last step, guys. We can turn on the visibility of all these layers. And now all my animation basically happens at once. That House Hunters is a little bit longer, but we're going to just offset things a little bit. I want series premiere to happen first, but I don't want it to happen the second my movie loads. I'm going to have it wait a few seconds. So I'm just going to take these frames here. Let's unlock them. All right. We're going to take the sliding mask and the text, and we're just going to offset it a little bit, selecting those frames. I'm going to drag them over to start at frame 10. So once that green box slides across the top right there, immediately afterwards, I'm going to have House Hunters slide in. So here we have House Hunters and its mask, these two layers. It's good that I labeled them so well, because you can really see how these layers are associated together. I'm just going to grab all of them, and we're going to do a little slide move. So now what you get, if we turn on masking by locking them all, series premiere, and then house hunters. Now I'm going to wait just a little bit in the timeline before I introduce September 03 and 9 p.m. I want people to be able to at least read stuff and have a little bit of dramatic pause here. So let's go to the other layers that we're dealing with. The September 03 is the next thing to come in. So I need gonna just grab these frames here and we're gonna, just gonna slide them over. And I'll have them come in maybe around frame number 60. Okay. Lastly, I'm gonna take 9 p.m., grab that stuff, and we'll have it happen right after that animation finishes. So here we go. Let's test it out. Trump, trump. That uh, sound effect was me, the whole, uh, watch this, chomp, chomp. There you go. Really adds a lot of pizzazz there. So that's a very quick walkthrough of this animation technique. Um, I'll try to link up some resources if you know nothing about masking, or maybe I'll do a very quick walkthrough. Um, but it's a fun technique. Now that next time you watch TV, you're going to be seeing it everywhere. Uh, so, But remember, I explained it to you first, and let's just call it the HT. HGTV effect from here on out. All right, guys, leave me some comments. If you got any questions, I'll address them. Thanks for watching.